Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of my semantic kernel series. So in my previous video, I spoke about what the semantic kernel, what are the various components it is having and how can we use that? So, and what are the reasons behind this and why do we need to use semantic kernel? So all these things we have already covered in my previous video. So in this video, let's see how we can get started with semantic kernel, what all things we need to install in VS Code to get started. And then we will try to call a very small plugin to see how it works. So in order to get started, uh, I'm on my VS Code and the very first thing you need is you need to go ahead and install the extension, which is semantic kernel. So in my case, I have, this is the first extension which you need to install. So once you will install this extension, you will see that a new tool got added at the end of your this toolbox on the left hand side. So this is the tool which will get added. And another thing which we need is like semantic kernel supports both C sharp and Python. So if you are planning to use both the coding languages in single notebook, then for that you need to install another extension which is polyget I think mm, let me have it. oh yeah polyglot so this is the extension which supports coding in multiple languages so these are the languages which you can uh, use when you are working with your notebooks so this extension will be very useful going forward when we will try to club both the types of code especially C sharp and the Java uh, sorry C sharp and the Python code so with this, we can get started with our very first thing. So I'm not going to use those extensions here, but I have installed it so that it is easy for us to use it in future. So the very first thing we need to do is make sure that you have installed the semantic kernel and this is the version which I have installed. So in my case, I have already installed it, so I'm not going to do it again. The next thing is we need to import semantic kernel. So for that, we will say import semantic kernel as just give some alias so that we need not to type it again and again. Then we need to create an object of this type. So we will see, uh, we will say kernel equal to sk.kernel. So once this is done, our kernel is ready and we can go ahead and plug in what, uh, plug the things, connections, logging, whatever we want here. So next thing we will be doing is we need to invoke the plugins from the kernel. So if you don't know what are the plugins, like I said before, plugins are the way using which we can call semantic as well as native functions code. So there are some out of box plugins which are already available in semantic kernel. So you can just Google it or search it over any web engine, search engine that uh, semantic engine, uh, semantic kernel plugins, and it will list you all these plugins. So these are the ones which I'm showing you from the official documentation. So these are around eight. And the very first one here is to summarize the conversation. We have the one for file read write operation, one you have for calling the API. Then we have something related to math. We have text memory, text plugin time, as well as um, wait plugin. So, to make this demo very simple, I'm going to use text plugin. And these are the plugins which are already having some functions implemented. So you need not to go ahead and implement it. So let's see how we can utilize these already uh, provided out of box plugin. So for this, I'm going to write from semantic kernel dot core plugins and then we'll say text plugin. So here we will just import our text plugin, which is this one. Once this is done, we also need to uh, import the kernel arguments because kernel arguments is a way uh, using which we can pass parameters to the function. So we'll say semantic kernel dot functions dot kernel arguments and here we will get kernel arguments. So these are the only two things which we need to import for calling the plugin. Now I said, like I said, we will be using text plugin. So let's, let's create some variable. And inside this, I will say kernel dot import plugin from object. 
and in this you need to tell which plugin are you planning to invoke so in our case it is just text plugin and then we need to provide some name to it so i will say my plugin so once this is done we are good to go ahead and construct our arguments so for create, uh, constructing the arguments we will be using kernel arguments so in this you need to pass in your arguments so let's say in this video what i'm trying to do is i want to convert a string into uppercase using the out of box plugin which is provided by semantic kernel so definitely my input would be some kind of string so let's say toys are uh, very good let's say this is the string which i want to convert it to uppercase now once we have this arguments constructed then we need to go ahead and invoke this particular function using the kernel so i will create our variable name response and as it is async call we need to use await here and then we'll say kernel dot invoke inside that we need to pass in a the function name so which function do you want to call so i want to call uppercase so list of functions whatever are available you can explore it you can easily find it in the documentation somewhere because i picked this function name from there only and then we need to say arguments equal to the one which we just created in above step so arguments i think we are good to let's execute it and see if we are good so I will go ahead and print the response and here you can see the entire thing which was returned. So what this function does is it will just convert a string to uppercase. And these are the things which are returned. So and this is the value which we are expecting. So if you want to just get the output, you can say response dot value and it will give you directly your output rather than this entire metadata. So this is how easy it is to invoke any function which is provided out of box by semantic kernel so i hope you got an idea and in my next video i will show you how can you invoke any uh, prompt or how you can invoke uh, anything with respect to your open ai or your open ai we will be taking a prompt in a file and then we will see how we can invoke that using semantic kernel so for this video let's keep it simple and to summarize in this video we have seen what are the what are the extensions which we need to install in order to work with semantic kernel and then we have seen how you can invoke the existing functions which are provided out of box by semantic kernel using a plugin so that's all we did for today and do let me know in comments like what all videos you are looking for particularly with respect to semantic kernel thanks for watching